Hello, everybody. I'm going to start up here. In a, uh, I guess we're on tape, so we have to make it official. Uh, actually, we're not on tape anymore, although I do use duct tape quite a bit. But um, my name is Mike Darina. Uh, I'm the CEO of Think Right Technologies. I'm also a graduate of the uh, program. It was the Ed Tech program in uh, 2002 uh, is when I graduated. Um, and uh, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the journey I've been on since uh, since uh, birth, maybe. I might go that back that far. But um, my I, um, my role now is a lot different than what it was uh, when I was doing the program here. And that was almost 20 years ago when I started this program. So one thing I like to do is kind of gauge who I'm talking to so that if I make sure when I'm talking to you, I'm talking to the right about the right things. Because if I'm talking to the wrong audience about the right thing, then it just doesn't always work. So uh, how many guys? are graduates of the program? How many guys are currently in the program? How many guys are looking at the program? Okay. How many guys uh, are, are in some type of educational environment of what it is your work? Okay. How many guys are in a corporate setting? Okay. And how many of you guys uh, don't have a job and just kind of just go these things kind of freely just walk over the you know? <laughs> It's kind of cool. This guy's going to have it. Job soon, I think. But <laughs> I keep wondering about that, but I think Bernie's going to be here long past all of us. Um, so one of the things uh, you know, uh, everyone want to focus on is that um, I'm not a business major. I didn't go to business school. I was an English major. I uh, got a job as a teacher, somewhat out of college. Um, tried lots of things, and then somehow I ended up as a CEO of the company. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that journey. Um, What's interesting is just to tie it into this, this whole um, um, event here. Um, I was at the Q conference this last year. Uh, we had a booth there, um, and I ran into Minwan and Bernie. And uh, it was kind of cool to kind of reconnect back, kind of circular to, you know, some old roots um, of uh, where, you know, where you come from and where you've been and where you are. And, uh, you know, it kind of started kicking me back into thinking, you know, about the program a little bit and, you know, what you learn here and what you take out and what you learn here, but you don't think about until it comes handy, you know, 10 years later or, you know, when you're up at three in the morning trying to figure out a design challenge and you realize that, you know, did I go through my Addy? Um, <laughs> did I really do an evaluation or not? Um, so my company, Think Right, uh, was formed in 2003. Formed in 2014, the, the colonel came in 2013 when I was, I was a tech director in Encinitas School District. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about the process I went through to get there. Um, but every once in a while in your life, a little window opens up where you can see the future. And uh, I, was, I was fortunate to have that moment happen to me. Um, and uh, fortunately or unfortunately, I ran through that window, that door window, jumped through it. and. Uh, it worked out in the end, but um, you know, sometimes when you see that window, you you have to go and figure out are you going to go for it or not. And so I decided to go for it, and you know, the rest is history. And we'll talk a little about that history. Um, this though, this is my first company I started in 1996 called Diablo Web Design. Um, I think our our uh, our uh, Web page scared a lot of people off. <laughs> we didn't have too many churches that were coming to us to do their websites at the time. A lot of rock bands, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, kind of satanic cults, things like that. <laughs> had somehow ended up with us. We ended up rebranding the San Diego web and we got a lot more work that way. Um, but this, so, you know, you have roots that you end up drawing upon and, you know, and you know, sometimes you're successful, sometimes you're not. This one was, so successful, I became a teacher uh, about a year later. And so, uh, and, but I kept working at it a couple years after, which kind of set the stage for what became my life is that I'm not just doing one thing, I'm doing many things at once. And so that's one of the things that uh, I guess uh, really built a foundation for me to start a company. Because the first two years of the company, I was still a tech director in Sanitas, uh, trying, to do, trying to do both. This is me in 1997. Uh, that was my first class. Uh, at Ocean Hill Elementary. So I just considered that year, 1997, I'd be you know, retiring about 62 years old, teacher pension. That was just kind of, everyone around me was doing the same thing. And so um, 
I, you know, started out with my roots as a teacher, and actually I learned a lot about entrepreneurship as a teacher. I mean, I think a lot of the things that I was able to build upon and draw from came from some of those early experiences about, you know, trying to make things work. Your first year of teaching, and any any guys that have been there, it's it's truly, um, you know, trial by fire, and it, you know, so. I can, I can, some of the stuff I did there, I failed in, I probably failed in starting a company as well. Um, but, you know, I think the roots are there and I, you know, that's why it's interesting when I talk to other educators, um, start talking about my story and talking about what I went through. A lot of people can relate to some of those early experiences as starting a company, because again, some of the stuff you have to do as a teacher is very entrepreneurial um, or in other roles. Uh, I'll talk about later as a head tech director and other, um, um, other uh, aspects of the education system, but um, little did I know 20 years later, I would be a CEO of a company. We just passed the 500,000 uh, unit mark. We've sold headphones out to schools. A half a million headphones is a lot of headphones, I just realized. Um, and most of them are working. Um, you know, that's part of the process too. Um, but, you know, this is, this is the product that we are uh, gonna launch with. And the main thing was, and I can hold up there, was that, you know, when people see that, they go, okay, that's good. So a lot of it, it really, again, was just finding something that was viable, finding something that, that worked, and, and working from there. Okay, this is me in 2002. This is a, as a proud graduate of the EdTech program. <laughs> Coming out of it, I uh, wasn't sure where I was going, I wasn't going to teach, but I learned a lot. I, um, it opened up a lot of new doors for me beyond just, again, that first thought of 1997, I was going to be a teacher for the rest of my life. There was new, now new opportunities in which to go into, and some of the, the kind of the alleyways I went into were definitely influenced from this, um, and you know, some kind of grew up off uh, other experiences. So. One of the things, so I got, I got itchy as a teacher. I don't know how many of you guys have the same thing. Um, I realized that I don't do well in a small space. I love kids, but I found myself after that first year, already I was, I was a tech trainer for the district very, very pretty quickly. Started working at Cal State San Marcos in a grant program called ILAS. I don't know if any of you guys remember that. Already does. Um, so I started seeing what else was out there in the world and finding that, you know, there's other things you can do in education it doesn't just involve being a teacher. And so, um, so from there, I, I actually, actually worked for a year out of, after the graduate program here, I got hired by SBC, which is now at t uh, as a uh, education advocate. And actually that had some roots from here. Uh, there were some, some folks that, uh, from San Diego State that actually were there. And I went, when I went to my interview, the reason, one of the reasons I got hired, because one of the guys is all, oh, you've got a master's degree in this, in this, you're hired, you know? And so it was like, okay, you know, I think, you know, people started to see that the value of, uh, of education, how it could expand upon um, what, uh, you know, where you go with it. So I only lasted a year at at and because it was a very big corporation. The big thing was I couldn't work on my own computer. It was locked down. When that happened, I was just like, I'm out of here. Um, and I ended up at the Orange County Department of Education uh, for three years. And that's where I started to understand that if people give you a little bit of uh, freedom, a little bit of a budget, you can make things. Um, one of the programs that, uh, that we started was called the Orange County Animation Project. And basically I was the CEO of that program. I had to, I started it up, I had to find the funding, I had to get all the resources, I had to find a lot of things, I had to figure out how animation worked um, because I was not an animator or an artist. Uh, my stick figures were probably not gonna be hanging up in any uh, uh, gallery. Um, however, I learned quickly that there's people that do know how to do those things around you and those are the people that you wanna start collaborating with and bringing into your circle. You can do a lot by, your, uh, by yourself, but at the same time, you have to learn how to be resourceful. Just like my first year of teaching, if I didn't have those parents that were there, that were acting as resources, had certain expertise, they really helped lift me up. And so the Orange County Animation Project started out as a project where we were trying to build animation programs at, at the high school level. We had, I think, four uh, the first year. 
by the time I left there three years later, we had I think, 25, almost every school district in the county had an animation program. We were connecting the kids with animators in, in uh, Hollywood for video conferencing, and they were doing, um, they were getting live feedback. We'd gotten a uh, half a million dollar grant from the, uh, the uh, California Community College for career uh, pathway development. Um, and that, again, that started with just a little kernel where someone said, okay, you need to do this. And so I learned quickly that, you know, that you can do a lot with a little, but there's resources out there that are available to you to help you grow. And when you start something like that and you, you're kind of tasked on your own, you have to learn how to do that. And so again, some of the foundations of, of starting a company kind of built from those experiences of knowing that there's people out there that do things well, that may not have to work with me full time. I just have to tap into those resources and then they can expand upon what you can do with whatever you're, you're doing. And so, you know, that was a good example of a, of a project that really, you know, expanded out. We ended up going from middle school all the way to uh, articulating into Cal State Fullerton, uh, Laguna College uh, of Art. And we had the teachers trained and going through and helping the kids see that there was a career pathway there. And so that was a very entrepreneurial thing we did there. And again, it, it helped set the foundation for me when I started the company in that you know, I'd already been through a process of being an entrepreneur. It was a little different because it wasn't about making products per se, but uh, you know, making a program is a product in a way. Um, and we had to sell it out to the schools. And you know, I think, like I said, the, the foundations were there. So in 2007, I went to the Encinitas School District as their tech director. That's where I started teaching. Um, again, I was brought in. We had uh, no IT department yet. We had uh, some consultants. Uh, and I was pretty much like, here you go, there's the program. It doesn't exist yet because you're the first person we're hiring for it. Have fun with that. So again, I drew back and went, okay. So I basically started my own on entrepreneurial programs at the NC School District on my own. Again, learning who my resources were, pulling them in so that we could support uh, the, the students. Eventually, we got a, uh, sorry, in 2010, we passed a bond that gave us some funding. Um, but, but to get there, we had to do a lot of really uh, low budget work and uh, uh, to build that foundation. Very similar to what I did with the animation project. And you'll see it's very similar to what I did with the company as well. So one of the things, you know, again, I don't know where all you guys are, but you know, I think as you look forward to your careers or where you are and, you know, I, like I said, I never thought I would be standing up here talking about being a CEO. Um, but, you know, as things change and opportunities come up, as long as you are open to them and, you know, again, think about what your experience is, you know, life can change and, you know, give you different types of uh, um, different things that you may be expected. So here's one of the things, some of the things I've learned about as an educator that experienced some confidence, gave me some confidence as well. Again, because when I, when I faced things, when I'm starting the company, I felt like I'd already done some of this stuff before, right? Or I'd been challenged in a way that was similar. Um, you can do a lot for low investment. I've talked about the animation project. I talked about starting the one-to-one -one program, all those things, there was no money. Eventually money came, but we had to do a lot with little until that, happened and the comp my company is now at a place that it's it's the, the investment the money came and now we're doing things that we couldn't do at the beginning um, but as a teacher you know I you know we had to draw a lot from parents and other resources you know and so we did a lot for little investment in 1997 the web was just coming you know really starting to emerge so there's a lot of free stuff out there and um, you know so it was a lot of that paid off, um, again, uh, because you're trying to figure out ways to enhance something without having money. Okay, duct tape's essential. Um, when I was uh, 20, 21, 22, my memory starts going after I turned 33. Um, <laughs> that, at least that's the excuse I give my wife. Um, we were down in Mexico and we had a, a flat tire in my brother's Volkswagen van. And we're like down pretty far in this dirt road and we did have a bicycle pump and duct tape. Uh, so pumped it up, put the duct tape on, made it across the border. Mm -hmm. Duct tape is something that uh, I think uh, is 
it get basically it's more of a symbol of you know being able to get past something or create something that maybe not be perfect but it's workable right and so there's a lot of duct tape used in the early days of the company as i'll talk about um and you know not having people around me that maybe had done that before that were saying no you don't do it that way you know just like when i was learning to teach i had people around me but when it came down to it you know they weren't sitting next to me all day so i had to kind of figure out things as i went along um don't be afraid to try fail many times i mean like i said that first year of teaching i failed every day you know for sure and uh, but i've learned and i just kept coming back same thing with every every position or every kind of role i've had is that you know you just got to jump in sometimes and realize what's the end goal what do you want to achieve and if you can keep your eye on that and know that you can get there, you know, those failures sometimes can fall away from you. Sometimes they hurt, sometimes they hurt really bad, but, um, you know, and that kind of goes to number four, with persistence will pay off eventually. For some reason, in, in my head, for whatever reason, I knew that I, I, this company was gonna make it from day one. Just because I, I saw an opportunity and whatever reason, whether I was just ignorant or, you know, just stubborn, and not everything in my life I can say has that I've had that feeling before, but for this, for whatever reason, I just saw it and, you know, kept going with it. And I think, again, I think persistence is one of those things that, you know, I think we could teach students, but experience is what teaches us from, uh, experience is how we learn to be persistent. And so, you know, again, if you're, if you're with students right now or other people that you're mentoring or um, supporting, um, you know, it's important that they, a lot of this is their experience as well. I always felt that, you know, I had to give my kids opportunities to fail, to try to build things. Um, and, you know, because that's where the learning comes from. And that's where your schema comes from. One of the big ones, I can fill many roles and positions at once. So I could be the CEO, I could be the CFO, I could be the designer, I can be the, uh, uh, the errand boy. I can be, you know, I can be the fundraiser. You know, I did a lot of those things in all my roles. And so if you get stuck that I can only do one thing, you're gonna have a hard time starting anything, especially from the, when you have no money, no investment. Um, the hard part though, is when you start hiring other people because you still wanna do all those things. And you, it, sometimes it's hard, it's hard, sometimes it's hard to let go of the roles than it is to take on the roles. Um, one of the things too is, is solutions, you know, is really what helped us, you know, trying to solve problems is what I think what made us, my company successful and my other programs I worked on, you know, we're trying to find a way to make, uh, you know, learning uh, more relevant for kids by, you know, personalized, um, give them immediate feedback because that wasn't happening as a teacher. I know that how hard it is to give kids feedback continuously. So we use technology in the one-to-one -one program to allow our students and teachers to do that. And you know, that was what was driving us, you know. Um, with animation, you know, we, we had a lot of kids that were on the fringes that were just not happy at high school. And we found these kids now got a career pathway and started to be able to go into places that, and in some of these areas like Santa Ana and uh, Orange, um, areas that there was not a lot of opportunity for, we saw these kids Kind of focus in and so again there's a, there's a solution there that created a relevant product or program and finally all those years of obsessively searching the web really paid off <laughs> because when you have to figure out how to source products from china and you've never done it before there's ways to do it and uh we need to find people to help you out there's ways to do it but you have to know how to find them so going back to kind of that transition from being an encinitas to um uh, to be starting a company. It's a picture of headphones that we were using and uh, hopefully the brand is showing up. Um, one of my competitors now. Um, the, uh, these headphones were breaking continuously in the classroom. And one of the, uh, in 2013, we adopted digital curriculum, got rid of our, tried to get rid of our textbooks, but we kind of adapted uh, to more of a digital, more feedback. Again, kids more engaged, the teacher has data coming at them. Um, but we had, we had a program that the kids needed to record their voice for fluency, and these headphones kept breaking. So I'd walk into classrooms with kids have iPads next to their heads. They would be trying to record. Um, so I said, okay. Um, and what would basically what happened was they just, it was the part of the system wasn't functioning. So 
I thought there's got to be a better way to do this. One of the most important things is that durability. Well, if it breaks, it's no good. So we start with the minimum bio product. I found a headphone that existed. In fact, you may have even seen this headphone somewhere else. It's, it's, a, it's a public mold. But what we did was we created a, a, a band or a, a cable that's fabric so the kids that chew on it can't get through it. <laughs> <laughs> um, we put two knots in here because kids pull up at that, right? We, uh, we made the microphone go disappear because I found those headphones the kids chewed on all day. And so now the microphone goes out of the way. And uh, the other thing, it just, it can go in a backpack. It has good sound too, and it's got good recording, but for most of the time, people want to see a, um, what they want to see is something that will last. The other product we launched with, and actually this, is, this was the genesis of the company, was a, an iPad keyboard. Um, when we started uh, the uh, SBAC testing, we had, we're an iPad program, and we found out that we needed mechanical keyboards to do the testing. So I'm all fine. I'll just go buy some. Could, no one sold an iPad keyboard in 2013 with a cable on it because Apple charges five bucks per license per cable, and everyone was using Bluetooth. So that's that window that opened up and went, holy smokes, this is a national test. There's going to be millions of students taking this test. A lot of iPads out there. So I basically hacked together an iPad keyboard um, using an existing keyboard, um, putting on some fu special function keys that I knew that were going to be used for the assessment, like guide access, increasing the size of the, of, of the print on it. Um, and I ended up getting that uh, approved by Apple. Um, and uh, it was MFI certified. We were about to launch it, and we got a headphone too at the same time, and I found out it was three-month lead time to get the connectors, and you had to pay in advance. So that would have been three months to get the connectors, a month and a half to do production, get it over here. I would not have seen any money for about eight months. And I had no money to begin with. And so basically I had a little bit of money. So what I did, we put everything into the headphones because they were cheaper to access to get. And we ended up not, a lot, we ended up not even going with the, the uh, keyboard. And we actually named the, the company Think Right, W-R-I-T, after the keyboard. So now everyone asks me, why do you have right in your title? I don't have a good story. But, um, <laughs> you know, so one of the things I talked about is resourcefulness is, if you guys are familiar with Alibaba, this Alibaba, you can go on and find almost anything to source. And so that's kind of where we started. I found a manufacturer over there, started interacting with them. They started giving me samples. And I just, like I said, I just kind of went for it. And uh, we, uh, we made modifications, and that's how we launched the company. Our first year, we sold 25,000 headphones. Uh, and now, we're, four years later, we're half a million. So we, having a product out there to get out was important. Um, and not having a lot of money or development, we didn't have an R&D team, really. We basically just had me and my cousin um, and you know, a lot of stubbornness. So this is, uh, this is our booth from ISTE recently. So we, you know, one of the things that we found was, you know, being in education helped me a lot because I know a lot of educators, I know the market. We've sold a little bit on the consumer side, but, you know, I think if you are in an, uh, an area where you have an expertise, like a sector like education, it was easy for me to make a transition. I, I mean, we're still looking at consumer sales, but that's just, you know, we're doing well with education, but. I knew enough about the problems, the solutions, and how to talk to educators. And you know, people like our story too. You know, you come from education into a company that tends to sell itself as well. The other thing is, we uh, made this video here. I'm a kindergartner trying to destroy our headphones. <laughs> There's a longer version on uh, on uh, on uh, YouTube, but that played pretty well because any teachers that sees that sees a little scamp trying to break something, they can't. <laughs> That, that sells itself, and I literally filmed that in my friend's house with my iPhone. Mm -hmm. You know, again, not big production. We did video production here, so that helped, that helped a lot. Um, let me skip through. So, and again, and so, you know, we ended up, obviously, we ended up getting a little bit more high quality in our production, in our, in our, um, our marketing. Again, this is all built around, you know, having very, you know, having a product that students liked, it's comfortable. The other thing is, you know, a lot of our competitors have like 20 different models of headphones. We've got one for each category. We like the in and out model, you know, 
make something good, make it so that it's easy to choose, and uh, make it, you know, the best of the category possible. Okay, but there, like I said, there has been there has been problems. Um, we do we do charging devices as well. This was a charger that looks identical. Um, we sourced it from a company called Orico, and what happened was uh, when I did my testing on this, it was great. When this came, it started heating up, and the, it started dropping connections off things. So you know, we spent a lot, of, you know, a bit of money on sourcing those, and it took six months we actually got our money back but we actually had launched that product and had to recall some of those again trying to get through sometimes when you go through again being resourceful and you don't uh you know sometimes it can backfire too you know so now we actually have a we have a couple other charging devices that go through lab testing and we learned our we learned a lesson that you know that some stuff you have to even if you test it you have to test it again and again. And so, you know, those are things that we learned along the way. But again, as a company, we've grown into, into that. It didn't ruin us and it, you know, maybe it was a little blip, but it gave us experience now that we grew, we grew from. So this is, uh, this, is, uh, this, is, this was our first manufacturer uh, in China. It's one of our QC testers. That was in China in 2016. Uh, we were actually over there trying to find a new supplier. So. And I got, when I got to this, uh, to do the testing here, I actually found a bug that no one else found. Fortunately, I was in the room with them, but the, uh, the, the USB iPad, uh, on the iPad was, uh, there was something, was, it wasn't connecting. On the, sorry, the Mac. And they were testing on a PC. And so again, I think, you know, it's one of those things that as you grow your company, you have to have the right people. And we just hired these guys uh, to take over and really helped us kind of expand our QC. They had six people on the ground there. We didn't have, you know, it allowed us to not have to hire somebody, but be able to have people in place. That's our, uh, that's our team right there. That's Sophia. She still emails me because we left. And let's see if we can go back. Um, this was us going to one of the factories. They had a little welcome sign to our company. So this right now, this is, we're, so what we've gone, we, we've gone from this, to this. So we develop our own headphones now from the ground up. So we now have the we have the ability to produce what we what we want. And you can see there's different iterations here. Um, what I do is I go into the classrooms and put these on kids' heads. Because again, who's good, who's the audience? And you find out quickly that this first version fits great on a kindergartner, doesn't fit so good on a fifth grader. So you have to go make your modifications. And so you know, again, part of the part of that challenge of, of or char, uh, part of the challenge of building is that you have to know your audience, and you have to be able to know that it's going to take a while to get get out. Doing this, I literally took me no money. I just sourced it. This takes more money, but when you build a foundation that allows you to do that, you can now start scraping the ground up exactly what what you want. So this is our one of our first 3D prints when we were uh, doing our own. So that's that's a school. So if you, how many of you guys have done 3D printing before? Okay, if you've done 3D printing before, you, you know you have to have a foundation or a platform because if there's nothing to draw from, like if you want to print something and you think it's going to be able to print out of air, you have to have these little, you know, so we learned pretty quickly how, how not to print and how to print. So this was early on the process this is so basically what happens then is we you go from that to a 3d rendering which is what we have here and that 3d rendering then becomes a print of it this one actually has a microphone um and so then eventually it comes to this and this is what the new model is going to look like so this is a uh, you know right now we're in the final stages of, of getting this uh and we're about to you know Try to get into production. This is our first uh, opportunity, but you know we came. We basically came from something that started, like I said, no money to now being able to fund and research and do R and D on our own products. And like I said, I mean, I, I go back to those early days of uh, being a teacher and thinking back. You know, a lot of this process, you know, is very similar from what I started with to where I am now. Um, you know. 
I think being a uh, first year teacher in a five, six combination in a school that had some affluency, but also had second language learners was very stressful. I mean, that first day people were pulling the kids out of my class. So I learned a lot about stress and how to deal with it. Um, you know, so now that when you're dealing with China or, or production failures, you know, build some foundation upon that. And then this is a, this is our future. This is our, our latest model. It actually has a removable cable because our number one failure point is a cable in classrooms because kids, they, when they pull a cable out, they pull it like this. They don't, you can tell a hundred times how to do it. And so, you know, again, we came up with a solution. The other thing, if you notice, it actually it's kind of removable ear pads too that lock in and out. And so, you know, going back to the solutions of what, do, you know, what is the best thing that's going to support the learning? You know, we've been able to kind of grow from a starting point to this. So, that's it. Thank you. And so, I said, Dakota is um, a teacher that I know that I used to work with, gave me a call, uh, texted me two weeks ago. Her and her husband are trying to get a product off the ground. Oh. And so I've been helping kind of support them and talk them through the process. And again, she's understanding a lot because she started kind of in the same place I did. So I think, you know, you're, just, you're gonna see, you see a lot more teacherpreneurs out there and um, you know, it's possible, um, you know, but you know, it's, it takes persistence, but you know, also takes belief. And if you have a solution that's gonna help kids in education, I think that that's something that can drive you forward. So thanks guys. Thank you. Okay, we have a few minutes to stretch and uh, get set up for our next speaker. Mm -hmm. I'm getting I'm getting I have Keep your day job until it's done. Right, right. Well, I don't know if I, I'm looking for something. You know, that's, I always, I always thought there was something that I knew I was going to run for.